In this second section, we will build a data form storage service with Spring. We are going to learn what is Spring validation, what is Spring data, and the Spring object serialization. We will learn how bin validation works with Spring 5. We will learn what is bin validation, what is bin validation 1, what is bin validation 2, and how to create a custom validator. Spring 4 supports bin validation. Bin validation is a Java specification which standardizes the validation of the Java beans, expressing constraints on object models via annotations. Today we have two versions of bin validation, bin validation 1 and bin validation 2. This is the set of annotations available in the bin validation 1. To build our data form storage service, we are going to use the Spring Boot Initializer tool. Selecting version 2, we will get automatically an auto-configured and self-running Spring 5 application. As an artifact name, let's put validation service. Let's also bring in two modules, web, which is a module with Tomcat and Spring MVC, and Lombok. Lombok is a module with a set of useful annotations. Generate the project, and then let's import it inside our IDE. Now, inside this application, let's create a bin to test some of the bin validation annotations. This user bin defines the structure of the information that we are going to send to our REST endpoint. To help us with the serialization and deserialization, we are going to use the data notation of the Lombok module. This automatically produces already a set of getter and setter for this bin, and also the toString method. Inside this bin, I have added three fields, username, email, and password. All of them have a validation. For example, for username, we are saying that max size of the string must be 10, for email, we are saying that is enough, that is not now. And the password, the minimum size of a password must be five elements. For the rest, is a, a simple bin with this constructor and uh, also uh, the getter for each property. Now that we have our bin, we need a REST endpoint to test it. This REST endpoint will serialize and deserialize our user object from and to object to JSON. This REST endpoint is on the slash user path as verb it accepts post and uh, as input it accepts a user object, object that we have created. We uh, return as a response, a response entity which has a user inside and as a HTTP status OK. Also, we are saying to the framework to validate our request body. So what we are going to do here is to pass a JSON object. This JSON object is going to be translated to a Java object, and then we return it the Java object uh, through the response entity, and again is going to be translated from uh, Java object to JSON to return a JSON response. Now to test this REST endpoint, uh, let's start the server, and then uh, we will test the REST endpoint uh, through a REST client. The server starts without any error on the port 8080, so we can do there our tests. As a REST client, I'm using Postman. I'm doing a POST call on our REST endpoint, uh, which is the slash user. And uh, I'm passing the JSON uh, format of our uh, Java object. So there is the username here, uh, the mail, and password. So if you remember, 
the kind of validation that we decide to have on this object is that uh, the username must be not longer than uh, 10 and uh, the password uh, minimum 5 and the mail, uh, the only important thing is that is not null. So now I'm sending this object, as you can see, I'm getting as a, a response, a valid response with the status 200, okay? Now I'll try to put here something longer than uh, five uh, characters. As you can see, I'm getting an error. Uh, the error is uh, size must be between 0 and 10. I can do the same thing also for the password. I can make it shorter than um, 5. And now, with the error of the username, I'm getting also an error for the password. Where I get the size must be between 5 and uh, whether it is the maximum. And the same thing applies if I remove the email from here. So now I have uh, an error for the mail, may not be null, and one, one for the password, another one for the username. Ring supports also Beam Validation too. The new features in it are a set of new annotations like a mail, negative, not blank, not empty and positive, uh, the possibility to do validation on collections, and also the possibility to do a validation uh, on cascading on collection. So now we can validate each value inside the collection, but also we can validate the key and the value, for example, of a map. So let's go back to our example. Let's stop the server. The first thing that we need to do is to add to the POM XML the dependency for the validation too. Now let's open our user object. Let's add some collection to our user object to test the collection beam validation. I have added here the mail validator, which is one of the new validator of the beam validation tool. But also I have added here two new collection. One is a list of friends and we are saying that we want to validate uh, this list, but also each element inside this list and let's see what is the validation that we do uh, for each of these friends so let's open this object which is an object that i have created is an inner class inside the user object i have applied even here the data annotation of lombok and uh, what we are requiring in this case is that the size of the name of a friend must be shorter than 10 chars Then we also do uh, the validation on this list, which is a list of strings. And uh, we do two validation. One is on the overall sides of this list. We are saying that must be contain uh, less than three elements, but also we validate each element inside this list uh, through this regular expression, which checks that the element is not uppercase. And uh, also, the size of this string is not uh, major than four. Let's start the application. Let's test it through our uh, REST client. Okay, now I have a, a valid object uh, with the friend list, also the address list. I'm going to add here a name which is uh, longer than uh, 10 uh, chars. As you can see, I'm getting an error on the size of the name inside the friend list. Another validation that we added is uh, that this must be lowercase. Let's try with uppercase. And we are getting an error also on the validation of this collection. The other validation was on the overall size of the elements inside this list.
Also in this case, we are getting an error that the size of this list must be between zero and three. We can also create our custom validator implementing the constraint validator interface. Let's see now an example on how to do it. Stop the server. And first of all, we need to create the annotation that we will use. So here we are defining the target of this annotation, which is a field in our case. Also, the fact that it is an annotation, the retention policy, which is at runtime, we will are going to do the check of this annotation. We have a message which will be displayed when this validation has an error. The default message is not secure enough. Also, here we are defining uh, where get validated the annotation and this is the class where we need to implement the constraint validator so let's create this class so in this class we are implementing the uh, constraint validator and we are saying that this constraint validator is of type uh, password security which is the annotation that we have created and string which is going to be the type of the properties that we are going to check and um, the only thing that we need to do is implement this method is valid which as an input a value and this is going to be the value that is in your property what I'm doing here is uh, really easy. I'm just checking uh, that uh, this value is not anything that is inside my blacklist. So if uh, the value is Mario or one, two, three, four, five, six, is not going to be valid. I return false. Otherwise, I return true. Uh, this means that is a valid password. Now we need to apply on the password of our user object uh, this annotation. Let's start the server. And again, let's test the REST endpoint through our REST client. So now we have a valid object. If I insert here in the password something like Mario, I should get our custom error. In fact, we are getting our custom error with our uh, custom message, not secure enough. And the same things applies if I insert one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, the error. But if I insert something else, the password is correct. I return a valid object. Let's summarize what we saw in this video. We saw what is bin validation, what is bin validation one, what is bin validation two, and how to build custom validator.